Hey, good morning everyone. Uh, this is Julian here and uh, today I want to talk about a brand new service that we announced at uh, reInvent yesterday. It's called Amazon SageMaker. It's, um, it's a brand new service for, for machine learning and in a nutshell it's really everything that you need to uh, define and train and deploy machine learning and deep learning models. It's a really, really great service. I'm very excited about it. Um, so um, this is the blog post that announced it. Uh, obviously, you can find uh, you can find it on the website. Uh, but let me dive directly into the service, and uh, I'm going to walk you through the main features. I'm going to show you some examples, some simple ones, and some uh, more advanced ones. So just uh, stay with me here. Um, this is the SageMaker console. And as you can see, we have four parts in here. Um, we have the notebook instance, which is a, it's a managed uh, AWS instance that you're going to start to run your notebooks. And uh, it has a lot of samples uh, for you to look at. And we're going to take a look at those in a minute. Um, and that's great for experimentation, right? I mean, this is the easiest way to get your notebook up in the cloud. Just uh, start loading data from S3, start training, just messing around with your data, with your model, and, and figuring out what, what you can achieve with it. Um, then the second part is actually um, training, right? Defining training jobs um, and um, uh, poss possibly doing distributed training if you need to. Uh, we're going to look at that. Um, then once your model is trained, you can host it in, um, in SageMaker. Right, so that's uh, you have that uh, model repository here, and the last step is to deploy the model behind an endpoint that you can invoke from your notebook using the uh, SDK or from um, an HTTP API in your own application. And all these four parts uh, obviously can be combined, right? They can be uh, linked end to end to go from experimentation to uh, to production, but um, they can also be used independently. So you could only use the notebook part if you just want to experiment, or you could just use the the deployment part if you came with your uh, own pre-trained model, uh, and if you just wanted to host it and deploy it. And again, we're going to look at some examples. So first, let's look at notebook instances um, I've got here one that's uh, that's ready because you know we don't want to wait just gonna show you how to create one um, just give it a name you can pick from um, one of those instance types so t2 medium for you know dev and really small stuff small data set m4 Excel if you want uh, a little more power and uh, a P2 instance, uh, which obviously comes with a GPU. If you want to do uh, GPU training and, and basically work with larger and, and more demanding data sets, right? So you could just pick one of those types. Uh, you need an IAM role. And uh, obviously, uh, we can create a role here. And uh, you can decide which VPC you want to uh, deploy that uh, notebook instance in and an encryption key if you want to, and of course some tags. Okay, and then you just click, click on the create button, you wait for a few minutes, and your instance is ready, right? And I've got here one, uh, P2XL instance, um, and I'm just gonna click open, actually I did that already, and this is what you get, right? So um, a familiar Jupyter environment, um, and plenty of samples. So, of course, you could just create a notebook here directly and get to work using one of those uh, one of those environments here, right? So we've got uh, uh, Spark and PySpark and MXNet and TensorFlow and Python. And as you can see, we, we support Python 2, Python 3. So, you know, I guess we got you covered. Um, we'll, I guess we'll add uh, more environments as we go, but that's a nice uh, set to to start from uh, from day one, I suppose. So um, plenty of examples here. All these are notebooks that have been uh, written by uh, by the, the AWS experts to teach you basically how to work with um, SageMaker. So let's start with a very simple one. Um, this um, this is a notebook 
that uses the XJ uh, boost algorithm to do uh, uh, classification on the MNIST dataset. Um, and let's go into uh, into details here for for a bit. So actually, when you work with SageMaker, um, you don't have to build everything yourself. Uh, in this case here, where you are uh, using an off-the-shelf implementation of XJBoost that, that we're happy to provide to you guys. And that's it, basically. It's, it's there for you to work with. So just bring your own data uh, and use that algo and you can train and you can deploy it. So there's no, um, you don't even get to uh, mess with MXNet or TensorFlow or, or anything like that. You just pick that algorithm, um, throw data at it, train it, and, and off you go. So this is really, really great. This is the simplest way for uh, for developers and, and data scientists to get started and to get training. So let's, let's look. Uh, I'm not going to go through every single line of code because I've got plenty of stuff to, to show you and of course all these are available you can read them in detail um, <clears throat> so um, maybe just a word here um, all our data is going to live in s3 so um, uh, prior to using your your notebooks make sure you have an s3 bucket and make sure it lives in the same region as um, as your notebook instance right you will probably get an error i did get one when i tried using a bucket that was not in the same region as my instance okay so here i'm using us east and i've got my s3 bucket over there okay so um, we're gonna load our data okay we're gonna fetch that amnis data set uh, from uh, from the web pretty easy uh, we need to convert it uh, to the to the format to the input format that the algo requires. Uh, here we need to put that in the lib SVM format, okay? And uh, well, I guess you can reuse all this <laughs> all this code. Uh, you don't have to uh, to dive too deep into that. Um, that's going to come in handy for uh, for future notebooks, I suppose, as well. Okay, so we need to convert it. So uh, take that input data set, convert it to that uh, libsvm format into S3. And now we get to the really important part. Um, so like I said, that uh, XJBoost algo is off the shelf. And how, well, actually, how do you use it? Well, um, we host it, uh, and, and this algo and all the others uh, are actually hosted in Docker containers. And that's why here you see um, uh, images, right? Docker images hosted in, in the regions, uh, in the different regions. Um, so we have the list of, uh, of images that are, uh, that are available in the different regions. And like I said, it, it's all prepackaged, so you don't need to worry about... Um, uh, installing anything on that image it has xjboost the, the that's the entry point for the container and what we need to define in our jobs is the parameters that are going to be used by that xjboost implementation so it, um as often with aws it's uh, it's a json uh, it's a json document as you can see um and let's not go over everything here this is probably interesting here so this is the size of the um, of the of the training instance uh, we're going to use uh, for uh, um, to, to deploy the to deploy the model later on um, and here we have some high hyper parameters for xj boost right how many classes do we have uh, 10 because we're working with the MNIST data set right so digits from 0 to 9, that's 10 classes. Um, we need to define the input data, where the bucket is, etc, etc. Okay, so just a few parameters. And obviously, all these will be uh, will be defined and, and pre explained in detail in the documentation. Okay, so don't worry too much if you don't get one of those, just look at the SageMaker doc. And for each algo will give you um, the, the different parameters that need to be uh, to be passed to to the model. Okay, and that's it. So this, this is the only thing you have to do, really. Uh, just define the, the parameters for the model. And now we can just define our training job. Okay, so we're, uh, training, on a, we're training on a single machine. Uh, we could do distributed training. I think we, we got an example of this uh, later on. Okay, so just define that job. 
Um, yep, here, here is the uh, distributed example. So actually, we're going to create a second job, okay, just to show you. That's it's actually pretty easy. As you will see, it's just an API call. So um, we're going to train on a single instance. We're going to train on multiple instances. And we're going to submit those jobs. And this is how you do it, right? So this is the SageMaker SDK. It's a Python SDK um, that you can use to drive all your uh, SageMaker activities. And well, this is how you get a job um, started, okay? And of course, you can describe it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right. Um, so this is going to train for a few minutes. I mean, this one took uh, eight minutes. And going back to the console for a second, uh, you would see uh, the, the progress here on uh, on on that dashboard, right? So, um, for example, this is the single yeah, single instance job, and of course, you get all the information here how how long it took, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? And you can find some logs and, and and so on. It's it's all it's all detail, right? All, all logs are in CloudWatch, uh, and so on. Okay. So well, I did it already, so we don't have to wait. Okay. So after a few minutes, uh, I've got my jobs done, and uh, well, I've got the single machine completed, distributed uh, training completed. And now I want to deploy this. I want to host it in SageMaker for prediction. Okay. And well, just like for training, this is going to be hosted. Um, this is going to be hosted in a container. Okay. So um, I'm going to grab some information from that uh, from that train model here, and I'm going to uh, basically build my endpoint configuration. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to create it. Okay, so here's the endpoint configuration. So I'm going to host my model on a C4 Excel. Um, I'm going to host only one model. That's the weight that you see here. Uh, one of the great features of SageMaker is you could have multiple models behind the same endpoint. So you could do A-B testing. You could uh, shift traffic from one uh, model to another. You know, you could try out multiple models in parallel, see which ones perform best, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is really cool because if you have to do this yourself, I mean, it's a lot of coding, it's you know, it's a lot of plumbing, and well, here we take all that pain away basically. And now we create the endpoint, right? And this is gonna run for a few minutes because we have to we have to start that let's say C4 Excel instance, um, and after a few minutes, yep, it's ready, right? Uh, so um, we should be able to test it, okay? And well, this is the part I didn't run, so let's try it. Okay, so now I've got my model hosted on uh, on an instance, and I can uh, use it for prediction. Okay, so let's give it a try. So let's grab our data set. And let's try some samples. Okay. Yep, so uh, we predicted uh, that the label is 7. So hopefully that image was a 7 in the data set. And now let's do a whole bunch of them. Okay, let's do batch prediction. So we're doing, how many are we doing here? Uh, probably, yeah. Okay, probably 100 one. Yep. Okay, and yeah, we did get 89% uh, uh, accuracy, which I suppose is okay. Oh, here we go again. Okay, some predictions. Corresponding labels, so you have the seven and the two. Yeah, actually, uh, these are good, right? First ten one are good. Um, we can see that confusion matrix to get an overview here. Yep, so that's a little small, but we can see, you know, we get we we're we're pretty good. We have some some errors here and here, but the confusion matrix is uh, is kind of okay. Right. So here's an example of uh, using 
um, an off-the-shelf algorithm, right? As you saw, we didn't uh, worry about MXNet. We didn't look at TensorFlow. We just said, hey, I want to do XJBoost. I want to train it on uh, MNIST, uh, uh, single uh, instance training, uh, distributed training. I want to deploy it, and I want to invoke it. And all, all of that uh, with just a few uh, a few uh, lines of uh, SageMaker SDK. And actually, as you can see, there's always a lot more work messing around with the data than there is with the actual model part. And of course, we could delete the endpoint, but I'm going to keep it for other testing, right? So let's look at a second example. So now I want to do, uh, I, I'm still going to work with, uh, with MNIST, but I want to use um, a deep learning model, okay? So, well, I'm going to use that uh, that usual uh, multi-layer perception here, right? And this this time I'm going to use my own uh, MXNet uh, script, okay? So I'm not using uh, an off-the-shelf algo. I'm bringing my own uh, model uh, and my own training script, okay? And we're going to train and deploy everything again. Okay, so I'm sure you've seen this example before. It's uh, it's the MXNet uh, uh, tutorial for MNIST, right? So defining uh, a basic uh, multi-layer perceptron, and and uh, and my training script, right? Uh, loading the training set, loading the validation set, uh, building the iterators for both, cr uh, creating the module uh, from the, from the uh, MLP. Uh, training the MLP on the data set, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so basic, uh, basic MXNet stuff. Okay, so how do you run that? Um, well, it, it's it's actually fairly simple because the SageMaker uh, SDK has that high-level MXNet object that I love already, and um, the only thing that you have to do is use it and pass your uh, MXNet script. Okay. Uh, what kind of training instance do you want to use? Okay, again, we're using an M4 here and hyperparameters. Okay, and here it's a very basic script, so I'm just using a fixed learning rate, you know, no, nothing fancy. Okay, and I'm using only one instance, as you can see. And this is it. This is how you're going to fire up uh, a training instance with MXNet, just providing your code and, and uh, a few parameters. So that's really, really cool, right? Uh, so I trained it, and well, as you can see, we've been through all the epochs. Let's scroll down all, all the way down. Okay, so I trained for uh, 24 epochs, 25 probably. Um, here's my validation accuracy, and it took six minutes. And all of this, again, right, you have to realize, that all of this got uh, uh, kicked off by this um, MXNet object, which which is great, right? Which is great. Just call it, provide the script, give an instance size, call fit, wait for a few minutes, job done, right? No need to uh, go and start EC2 instances with the deep learning AMI, etc., which is great, but this is even simpler, okay? And uh, just like in the previous example, uh, now we want to deploy. So uh, we're going to deploy our, uh, our model to, again, a C4XL. Takes a few minutes because we have to provision the instance, uh, configure it, etc. And and then, just like we did earlier, uh, we can try and predict. So uh, we've got this cool HTML thing, so let's, uh, let's give it a try. Um, so let's say I want to classify this thing, right? And it is a three, right? <laughs> so that's a good news. Um, so how did you do it? Well, this is how you do it, right? Uh, you call that predictor. Uh, you invoke the predict API on the on the predictor object, and you get your response. Um, so here I'm using the SDK, but I could uh, I could do a HTTP invocation as well from from the outside world. Okay, so let's try another one. Oh my God, it's wrong. No, that's not an eight. Yep. Yeah. so that's the MLP for you, right? It's not great. Or maybe my six is just a little weird. Let's try another six. Oh, <laughs> this looks ugly. 
Yes, well, it, it is ugly, but it looks like a six, right? So I guess the French uh, sixes and the, the American sixes don't look quite the same. So I'll leave it out to you to figure out which ones look good and which ones don't. But anyway, our prediction is correct, okay? And of course, we could delete the endpoint again. So this is really cool, I think. Um, just, you know, uh, just create... Um, write your uh, your training script for MXNet, but that's a vanilla script, really. Uh, you could be running this locally, or you could be running this on an EC2 instance, again, with the deep learning EMI. So just bring the same code, pass it through that MXNet object, uh, train it, deploy it, and then you can do predictions, right? It's zero infrastructure to manage, uh, and just a couple of SDK calls, right? So very cool example. All right, let's keep moving. Hopefully you're still with me and you're you're excited about SageMaker. Well, you can tell I'm excited even though it is 5.38 a.m. in Las Vegas. Um, and yeah, that's what evangelists do. So um, here's the third example. So here I'm going to bring my own model. Okay, so in the first example, we took an off-the-shelf algorithm. And we didn't worry even about the, the library we we're using. In the second example, we uh, used MXNet with our own uh, training script, and we trained that MXNet model. Here, I'm going to bring uh, a model that has been trained outside of SageMaker, right? Remember I said you can combine all those SageMaker parts, or you can use them independently. And here, that's what I'm doing, really. I'm, I'm just taking a, a model that I trained uh, elsewhere, and I'm going to host it in SageMaker. So we're not going to train it, just host it. And this model is, is k-means, so it's a clustering algo. And we're going to see what that does, right? Um, so... Yeah, so it's a scikit-learn model. I guess you guys are familiar with scikit. And we're trying to do uh, clustering on MNIST once again. right? So we're trying to cluster those digits into 10 clusters because there are 10 different types of digits. So let's pretend we did this uh, on our own machine, right? And, uh, and we wanna, now we want to deploy it to SageMaker, host it in SageMaker. Okay, so of course the the models um, the, the the way you're gonna interface with the model needs to match. So um, the the like he says here, right? This is really important. You want to make sure you understand this. Um, the model format that uh, k means the k means container expects is it's an MXNet ND array and it should have a specific size, which is number of clusters, uh, feature dimensions. Etc. Okay, so uh, we need to convert that. Basically, we need to to make sure we can fit uh, our model with the the proper shape of data. Okay, so just make sure you understand that part. <clears throat> and then I'm going to uh, well, I'm going to basically package my model, copy copy it to S3, and then I'm gonna host it. Okay. So once again, we train that scikit k-means model outside of SageMaker, um, and we want to deploy it. Okay. So again, we have our uh, uh, we have our, uh, our Docker containers for uh, for k-mean, right? K-means, and here we're going to create a model. Okay. So we're going to get that pre-trained model. Uh, the scikit learn model and we're gonna uh, yeah, well basically inject that in, in a container if you will okay and that's just this api called create model here and that's it right so this is pretty cool then we can uh, set up the endpoints okay uh, again to host the model because that's really what we're trying to to do here just host it so c4 excel once again one instance and then create the endpoint just like we did earlier. Okay, same exact same calls. And now our model is ready for prediction. Okay, so no training, just take that pre-trained model, 
and and throw it into uh, into that Docker container. So um, of course we might want to compare the results. We want to make sure that uh, the prediction that we do on that scikit uh, model on that you train say on your laptop um, perform exactly the same as the prediction that uh, that is now hosted on SageMaker. Okay, so yeah, we could try and do that. Okay, run some uh, run some prediction, compare them, and well, as you can see, they're all the same, right? So it's good news. The fact that you know we took that model and and and, and moved it to uh, to SageMaker hosting didn't break it. So great, <laughs> right? It's still um, it's still performing the same. All right, so. This is a third way, right, of, of using SageMaker. Uh, just a quick recap. First way, off-the-shelf algos. Second way, um, pick your uh, MXNet library or your TensorFlow library, bring your training code, train and host, right? And the third way is bring your own model, something that has been trained outside of SageMaker, and you can just host it uh, and, uh, and perform a prediction, okay? Uh, all right, the last thing I want to show you is the more advanced uh, way of doing things. Uh, now imagine that you have a custom library, you have a, you have custom code, uh, you just cannot work in any of the three ways that I just mentioned, right? You can't use off-the-shelf algos, um, you can't just use uh, MXNet or TensorFlow, maybe you want another library, maybe you've got your own, uh, etc., etc. So we also let you bring everything really so you can bring your own docker container to perform training and prediction okay um, and this is this is really powerful for the, the most advanced users so in this case obviously um, you will need to build the container right so um, this is a very very nice notebook here it's very long so I, I will just cover the general details um, and, and of course you can read it. So yeah, in case you need an overview of Docker. Um, so of course the Docker container needs to have a certain, um, the, the files hosted in that container need to have a specific structure um, so that SageMaker is able to invoke your training script and your prediction script. So make sure you do read all these instructions, right? All these details are really important. Right, because if you cannot just bring your scripts and put them anywhere, otherwise, otherwise SageMaker is not going to find them. All right, um, so make sure you use all those all those uh, file layouts. Make sure you use the same names, etc. Uh, your training script needs to be called train. Oops, uh, you know you you need to you need to pay attention to all these things. All right. Then, once you've uh, laid out your uh, all your files, all your scripts, all your libraries, um, of course you need to write a Docker file and uh, and build a container. Okay, so here's an example that uh, hopefully will get you started. All right, and then you need to push your container to uh, ECR, which is the uh, uh, the repository for Docker, uh, the service for uh, Docker images. In, uh, in AWS. Um, okay, so you need to create a repository if it doesn't exist, and then you need to log into ECR, and then you need to build your image, and you need to push it. Okay, so yeah, there's a bit of Docker work involved, obviously, but you get to tune that Docker container exactly the way you want it. Okay. Um, it's probably a good idea to test locally. I would suggest that you do that because it's easier to debug your container on your own machine than it is on the that it is uh, in the cloud. So just uh, make sure everything's fine. Make sure you can find all the scripts uh, and 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 do some testing locally before before you actually try and and uh, and use it in SageMaker. Okay. Um, and once you've done that, uh, well, I would say. The rest is pretty much uh, is very similar to what I described. Uh, you've got your own custom image, but uh, you're going to uh, 
you're going to do uh, you're going to do training uh, with the estimator and yeah, I've got some errors there come I did something silly don't mind that um, you're gonna deploy it uh, with that predictor object and you're going to do prediction later on, etc, etc. Okay, so the rest of the process would be the same as if you were using one of our uh, one of our own containers. Okay, but again, there's a bit of Docker work involved to get everything ready. Okay, so uh, quick recap. This is SageMaker. Um, it's uh, basically everything you need to do machine learning and deep learning in the cloud at scale. Um, no need to manage any infrastructure. You can host and run your notebooks on, on instances, small ones or, or GPU ones. You can start training jobs um, and you can host the models and you can deploy them uh, behind endpoints and you can do A-B testing, like I said, okay? And you can take it uh, really easy uh, and just use off-the-shelf stuff like I showed you, right? With that XJBoost example, right? Very, very simple. Uh, you can go a little deeper by using MXNet or TensorFlow or, or Spark like you saw, PySpark, uh, and, and bring, your, bring your own code and train and host, etc. You can go even a little deeper by bringing your own model, bringing a model that has been trained outside of SageMaker and just host it, right? Or you could go all the way and uh, bring your own Docker container with your own training code, training libraries, your own prediction libraries, etc. Just all full custom stuff, okay? And it's a simple dashboard, and you know we see everything in here, and you have the logs in CloudWatch, and and you know it's pretty nice, I think. Okay, so well, this is it. Um, hopefully that was uh, that was nice and informative, and you're uh, excited just like I am about SageMaker, and uh, well, we're uh, we can't wait to see what you guys are gonna do with it, um, and if you uh, you know if you let me know. If you ping me on Twitter, if you ping me on LinkedIn, wherever, uh, I be I will be happy to you know retweet you and share your uh, your cool demos and your cool applications. All right. Well, thank you very much for listening. This was Julian, live from reInvent. Uh, almost time for breakfast, 5:50. <laughs> so well, get started on SageMaker and have fun, right? And talk to you guys later. Thank you very much.